Welcome to Fierce Feminine Rising podcast. I'm Melissa Kelly, your host and creatrix of Roar Fierce Feminine Rising magazine. And I have with me today, Sasha Kuto, here to talk to you about the liberty power of sexuality and how it connects us to our goddess and it has always been connected to pleasure. Welcome, love. Mm, thank you so much for this beautiful invitation and for the opportunity to discuss this powerful and so important topic. Oh, it's, it's, um, it's beyond important, I think, when it comes to just connecting to ourselves as women and the sisterhood and source energy. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have found that um, it's a missing link for so long in spiritual communities. This divorce from the, uh, from the waist down, this divorce of our sexuality has deeply affected our truest and most uh, raw and primal power and its manifestation. Sasha, can you tell us a little bit about where you're um, talking to us from and what it is that you do in the world when working with women? Totally. So I am Mexican. I, I am a multicultural woman. I am partly Mexican, partly Lebanese, and partly from everybody, uh, everywhere else in the world. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love it. So I am a body of culture, and um, I live in the peninsula of, um, in the peninsula of Mexico, uh, in the peninsula of Yucatan, which is all the way down near the ocean in the jungle. And <laughs> yeah, you can just imagine the connection with life and the, and the forces and the weather here. And my passion with the, with the divine has just been manifested uh, since a very early age. Since I was 12 years old, I was raised and trained in a sanctuary. So I have been totally committed to working with the goddess ever since. Wow, when you say raised in a sanctuary, like what do you mean? Uh, what exactly is that? Uh, it means that every, um, every summer, well, every week I would go to my classes. I was living at home with my family, but every weekend I would go to my classes and every um, summer I would go to the sanctuary and stay there for a month or two. And it was a place run by women, by very powerful priestesses where everything was around ceremonies and creating these sacred spaces for the divine to manifest. And so it was really like living in the old uh, temples of the ancient times. So amazing. My mind is blown just hearing you talk about it because to think about being at such a young age and being introduced to that world. Like I, I have a lot of amazing women in my life and a lot of us have gotten into this a little later in life. We're just learning about it. So to grow up in it would be so immensely powerful. Yeah, when everybody was just listening to music or doing things that normal teenagers do, <laughs> which is amazing, <laughs> I could spend hours doing my ceremony and my ritual and praying. So yeah, I, I had a very particular uh, teenage years. That's really beautiful, though, because I would think that it would connect you to your higher self and, and your divine energy um, right, right from the start. Yes, actually, for me, it became my most precious asset, my most precious goal to just be able to connect with this energy and to, and to embrace this path. It just felt like a craving from my soul. When I, when I found this place and this power in me and this connection with the divine, I just felt like I had finally reached my place. And at what... Um... At what point on your journey did you decide to add sexuality and pleasure into all of this? Mm. So that's so that's such a good question. This is <laughs> the the thing. Um, even when it was a sanctuary um, gu guided by women, the, there was a separation from the from the body. There was this concept of. Uh, the sacred versus the mundane 
Mm. And there was this passion, of course, with the goddess, and they would uh, summon the goddess, and it, it was really intense and powerful. But I could feel like there was um, this uh, relevance in staying in the path of the divine and never falling in the path of the mundane. But then I was kicked out of my sanctuary because I was a teenager, because I was way too young, because I was starting to have this craving for a relationship, for knowing guys, you know, like a normal mm -hmm. human being with cravings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they didn't take it because they were requesting total commitment. Okay. And I was the only young one in there. So I was lost. I was lost for a while um, because I was kicked out from the only place that I called home. So oh. I spent many years in my, in my dark night, feeling lonely and feeling lost. And then I started having a relationship that um, dragged me even deeper into the dark night because I felt like I was unworthy of love, unworthy of the beauty of life. And it was in that darkest night that I, that I went through that I found that my body was craving for something. Uh, my body was craving for feeling alive again. I was hungry for life. Mm -hmm. And I recognized that uh, when I started praying, I mean, I never stopped praying, but when I started praying for that particular cause, when I started asking the goddess for a sign, uh, when I recognized that I was craving life, uh, sexuality just started happening. I received my, my first Jadeh. I, I started working with my, with my own um, disconnection, with my own issues with my body, with my own anger at my body. And I discovered that I had been letting a part of me die which was my erotism, which was my Aphrodite, my erotism, my joy, my playfulness. And that's when I discovered that I really needed to reclaim it for myself, to go back into my own pleasure and my own body and my own womb. And in doing that, I found that that was a missing link all the time. That was the part that I had been missing all the time. That is so powerful. And I know that the women that are listening to this are going to feel the same. It's so immensely um, resonant and deep. Um, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing those parts of yourself with us. I think it's just really beautiful because when you really own all of who you are, and I love how your journey was about reclaiming all the parts of yourself and that the shift happened within you and everything, your power, your sensuality, your life force, what you were seeking was within you. Yeah, for me that just meant um, the most empowering experience ever. It, and it's funny because I have experience talking with spirit just in front of me or, or super powerful ceremonies. and. It never, I never thought something would up that, something would just bring that uh, to a deeper level until I had my first uh, natural uh, and spontaneous Kundalini awakening and, and just realized that it was all the time inside of me. So I think that that is a power that all of us have. That is an energy that all of us need to get in touch with and it's available for all of us. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think our sexual energy is also our connection to source energy and our life force. And it's for us. It doesn't have to necessarily be for another person or, you know, to seduce or to manipulate. It's, I feel like it's been so misperceived over the generations and taught to be suppressed because it's such just this powerful connection between you and you. I love that you bring that uh, to the conversation. I really love that because that's such an important point. How sexuality is not about somebody else, but it's about our own selves. It's something that we do for ourselves and that we can um, use to empower our own selves. That's so important. The way in which it has been taken out of 
uh, the way in which I say it, it's they, they took it and make it fit the patriarchal system mm. so that it wasn't threatening because there is such a power in sexual energy that it felt really threatening and it, and, and it was like the culture needed women to be back in their in quotations place so they mm -hmm. took that away from us they made us fear our sexuality they made us think that there was something wrong with desire there, there is uh, and literally there there were women that were born in the stake because of having an orgasm because of experiencing their sexual pleasure so it's an act of rebelliousness mm -hmm. and true power to reclaim our sexuality and in doing so we find that that is the path that it has been all the time between our legs that, that it has been all the time <laughs> in our bodies it has mm -hmm. been always there that's a path for such a power and an awareness that it totally changes the direction of our lives once we embrace it mm -hmm. our universe <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> I think it's really um, interesting too when you look at how um, with genital mutilation, for example, like girls are having their their clit cut off so they're not allowed to experience pleasure whereas men are circumcised right from birth to experience more pleasure later. Yeah. You know, just some ways on how it's really imbalanced and, you know. And I think that it has a lot to do with the way in which women approach the goddess. That's why I say it's the energy of the goddess is manifesting through sexuality. In the earliest, um, the earliest cults of the feminine, of the divine feminine, there was a sexual flavor to it that was so evident. There was both mm -hmm. a way of uh, being egalitarian. There was no hierarchy. There was mm -hmm. no proving that we deserved to get something, to live, to, to achieve something. That there was just life running freely through us. And the celebration of that life, the celebration of that energy is the celebration of the goddess. And in that celebration of the goddess, we bring it back to ourselves because there is no, again, hierarchy with her. She teaches us how to experience her through our own bodies. When you say that, I just feel how powerful the whole planet would be <laughs> if that was the way things were now, where there wasn't a hierarchy and a patriarchy and just both masculine and feminine really diving into that central energy, that soul connection, and just allowing the flow instead of trying to control or suppress. It would be, I mean, just beyond words. <laughs> Amazing. Exactly. It could be so prosperous and so natural because that's the way in which nature works. We were taught to fear our sexuality. We were ma uh, manipulated through our sexuality, dominated. And, and that's actually a way in which we are kept in control, right? It, when a man feels like a woman is, is needing to be put back in her place, uh, it's mm. when rape happens. It's when abuse happens. It's when, when they destroy this part that is so sacred, so sacred. And it's not about um, just men, but it's about the way in which a culture was taught to fear this powerful energy that, when flowing freely, it nourishes everybody, and it, mm -hmm. and it makes us all connect in a natural rhythm of life because she is life herself just manifesting through us it's so amazing i um i feel too it's like a reflection of fear of our own inner power mm -hmm. when you when you see people um suppressing and trying to control the sexual energy yeah yeah we were taught to fear this energy so badly that we we just can't Name one excuse after the other, right? Like oral culture, uh, the the desire to be good girls, so or the, the fear of mm. being attacked. Or, there are so many reasons that we could name why sexuality feels unsafe. 
and in that lack of safety uh, we stop expressing our truest being which is naturally playful naturally vibrant and filled with life and joy i love that so how would you um or what advice would you give to women that want to connect with that part of themselves i would first of all say that it's so important to allow yourself to mourn the fact that there have been years of pain in your body and to give your body that tenderness and that loving attention that it has been craving. There is a practice that uh, for me has been life changing uh, where I just start caressing each part of my body and feeling all the pain that this part has carried and come and I start comforting it like a child, like I would comfort my best friend if my best friend told me that she's feeling sad or wounded or that somebody insulted her. So mm. I start just taking these parts of my body and giving them that love and attention. Like I start caressing my legs and remembering how many times they have been insulted, even by myself. How many times I have thought they were too big, too fast, too gross or too whatever or too little of something. And I start just holding them and feeling that sadness that they feel. And I start being present for them and saying, I am here for you. I'm sorry. I love you. And in that, bringing this love back with presence into our bodies, we start mm -hmm. connecting. So pleasure is not necessarily about being always happy and joyful and, and you know, vibrant. But it's sometimes about just being present with mm, all the I sensations that. that arise, with all that happens in your body, and loving it with compassion and tenderness. That is the very first step to be in, in tune with pleasure, to recognize that there are so many flavors of pleasure and that they all have a right to exist. I love that. I'm just sitting here for a second to take that in because it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, yeah, it was just so good. Mm. I, I have experience that I would love to share because it really shifted my, my perception of myself. Please I do. Was, I would love to hear. <laughs> thank you. So I was doing this practice. I started doing this practice of pampering myself, my breast, my arms, my shoulders, and just crying with these parts of my body, recognizing that they were alive and crying with her and loving her because immediately after crying with her, I would just pamper them and love. And then I started dancing. It was a very dark time in my life. I was going through a very hard time. So I needed to dance. I needed to bring this energy back into aliveness after all this this comforting that i did for my body so i started dancing and feeling this connection to the earth with my dance because my body was alive because i was present in my body and so after my um, long dancing ceremony i went out to the street again and i passed by a little girl and then she stared at me and she pulled her mom by the dress and she said mom that's a queen. Are you a oh. queen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> and, and I recognize that she as a little child was seeing that vibrancy again in me. And I think that we all have this vibrancy. We just need to reconnect to it. And it's a kind of vibrancy that is not bypassing, but that it's present in everything that happens inside of the micro universe that our body is. I love that. And I think that when we take the time to be present, that presence is where love resides and us in our highest vibration and where the magic can happen. So it's not only just being present in your everyday life and in the moments, but within yourself, within your heart, within your womb space. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And loving that part and loving it gently because we need to be our very first allies. We need yeah. to start being allies to ourselves because sometimes we're the very first to attack us. 
to attack that part mm -hmm. of us that is wounded and that knows uh, just survives the best way it can so I think it's so important to start being more soft and gentle to these parts of ourselves that are just surviving and that is a, a also a way in which we are present and in which we are connected to pleasure to the pleasure of loving every part of ourself well Sasha thank you so much for sharing such wisdom and just the beautiful learnings and your journey that you've been through. I, I know that those that are going to be listening to this are going to take so much out of it. I know that I have. Thank you so much for this beautiful invitation. This means so much to me and I'm so grateful. I'm so happy to see this amazing podcast that you're creating. I can't wait to see your baby uh, being <laughs> heard by so many people. Thank you so much, sister. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love you and I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> See you soon. Bye, love. Bye.